Okay, so we have sample number four. Find the smallest value of P for which the crate shown will be in equilibrium and the position shown. Now, the mass of the crate is equal to 180 kilograms. Now, so first, let us try to draw the free body diagram of joint B. FBD of joint B. So the FBD of joint B, so we have This is your joint B. So we have uh, your uh, E1. So I'm just going to consider that your C beam here is T1. So this is now your T1. And your AB is your T sub 2. And T1 makes an angle of uh, 60 degrees with the horizontal. And this is now your P. It makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So this is now equal. So this is equal to 30 degrees. Now we now have the weight which is equal to W. So your weight in here is now equal to mass. Multiply this one by gravitational acceleration. So we have your weight as now equal to 180, that is kilograms, multiply this one by 9.81 meter per second square. So this is equal to 180 kilogram meter per second square. Now again, 1 kilogram meter per second square is equal to 1 newtons. Hence, uh, your 180 times 9.81 is 1765.8 newtons. Now, applying now the equations of equilibrium, so let's try to apply the equations of equilibrium. So we have uh, summation of forces. I'm going to consider this to be the x-axis. And uh, this one in here is now the y-axis. So if we're going to get summation of forces along the uh, y-axis, is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. Then we have upward forces positive. So we have your W seventeen sixty five point eight newtons. So we have T one sine of 60 degrees. So this is your T1. Sine 
of 60 degrees. So that is the component of P1 and the y-axis. And then we have your P sine of 30 degrees. So this is going down. So we have negative P sine of 30 degrees. And then minus W, which is equal to 1765.8 newtons is equal to zero. So that one is equal to zero. Now, let us consider this one as the first equation. Now, summation of forces along the x-axis is equal to zero to the right forces positive. We have T1 cosine of 60 degrees negative because the x component is going to the left. So that is T1 cosine of 60 degrees. And then plus P going to the right, the x component. Okay, so plus P cosine of 30 degrees minus T2 is equal to zero. So minus T2 is equal to zero. Let us try to consider this one as the second equation. Now for minimum value of P, T2 should be equal to 0. Hence, from equation 2, then minus T1 cosine of 60 degrees plus P cosine of 30 degrees is now equal to 0. So that your T1 in here, cosine of 60 degrees, is equal to P cosine of 30 degrees. Your T1, therefore, is equal to P cosine of 30 degrees all over cosine of 60 degrees. So let us try to substitute this. T1 in equation 1. So if you're going to substitute T1 in equation 1, then the value of T1 is P cosine of 30 over cosine of 60. So that is P cosine of 30 degrees all over cosine of 60 degrees multiply this one by sine of 60 degrees minus P sine of 30 degrees minus 1765.8 is equal to zero or we have P cosine of 30 degrees over sine cosine of 60 degrees sine of 60 degrees minus P sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1765.8. And therefore, your P, so we have cosine of 30 degrees, sine of 60 degrees, factor out P, all over cosine of 60 degrees, 
minus sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1765.8. Sequal to 1765.8. And therefore, the value of P is now equal to 1765.8 divided by this quantity in here, cosine 30 degrees, sine 60 degrees over cosine of 60 degrees, minus sine of 30 degrees, then your P is 1765.8 newtons. So that is therefore sample problem number five. Determine the stretch in its spring for equilibrium of the two kilogram block. So this one is the two kilogram block. Now the spring are shown in their equilibrium position. So when we're uh, determining the stretch in each spring, so we are getting the deformation of its spring or the elongation of its spring. So at this point in here, let us first try to draw the free body diagram of joint A. So let us try to draw the free body diagram of joint A. So that this is now your F A D. This is your F A B. And this one is now your F A C. So it's F A C. This is your joint A. Now Let's try to determine now your F A D. So your F A D is now equal to so you have the uh, mass multiply this one by gravitational acceleration that is two kilograms multiply this one by nine point eighty one meter per second square. So your FAD in here is now equal to 19.62 kilogram meter per second square again. That is in newtons. Knowing now your FAD, so let us try to determine now your FAB and F A C. So let's try to determine your F A B and F A C. Now your F A B has a slope of uh, three vertical to four horizontal. Three vertical to four horizontal, hence that is equal to five. So the slope triangle. And your FAC has three, hori three vertical and three horizontal, or that is just uh, one all over one. So this is now the square root of two. So I'm just going to consider this one in here that has the x-axis. And vertical to be your y axis. So this is your y axis. Now, summation of forces. 
Writing now the equilibrium equation, summation of forces. So we have now your equations of equilibrium. Equations of equilibrium. Summation of forces along the x-axis is equal to zero to the right forces positive. So we now have the component of FAB in the x-axis is going to the right, so we have positive. That is, FAB multiply this one by the x slope all over the hypotenuse that is 4 all over 5 and then the x component of FAC is going to the left so we have negative FAC we have 1 over the square root of 2 so we have the x all over the hypotenuse and this one is now equal to zero. So we have <laughs> summation of forces along the y-axis is equal to zero, upward forces positive. The y component of FAB is going up, so we have F a, B, the uh, vertical or the y slope, which is 3 over the hypotenuse of the slope triangle. And then the y component of FAC is still going upward, so that is positive. F, A, C, the vertical slope all over the hypotenuse or the y which is still equal to 1 over the square root of 2 minus FAD and your FAD is 19.62 newtons. So we have minus 19.62 is, sec uh, is equal to uh, 19.62 is equal to zero. 19.62, which is equal to zero. So let us try to consider this one as the second equation. So this is now the first equation. Now, solve equation one and equation 2 simultaneously. Let's try to solve equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. So this point, solving equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. So if you try to go to Simultaneously. Solving equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously. So we have equation 1. You have 4. Equation 1. So we have uh, FAB. 4 over 5, so this is uh, 4 all over 5 F A B minus 1 over the square root of 2 F A C is equal to 0. And then for equation 2, so that is 3 a lower 5 F A B plus 1 
over the square root of 2 f a c is equal to 19.62. So let us try to add the two equation to eliminate f a c. So 4 over 5 f a b plus 3 over 5 f a b is equal to 1.4 f a b and this is equal to 19.62 so your f a b is equal to 19.62 all over 1.4 or that is equal to 14 point zero one four fourteen point zero one four newtons let us try to substitute fab in either equation one or equation two substitute fab in either equation one or equation 2. So from equation 1, so this is your equation 1. So we have 14.014 multiply this one by 4 all over 5 is equal to FAC 1 over the square root of 2. So your FAC therefore is now equal to 14.014 times 4 over 5 multiply this one by the square root of 2. Hence, your FAC is equal to 15.85 5 newtons. That is 15.855 newtons. Okay, so let us try to determine now the spring deformation. Spring elongation and that elongation is now the spring deformation. So if you try to uh, go back to the free uh, body diagram of a spring. So we have F is now equal to K multiply this one by S. Your K is the spring constant and your S is now your spring deformation or spring elongation. Hence, your S in here is now equal to F a lower K. Now for AD, so for AD, your F AD is equal to 19.62 newtons. And your KAD is equal to 40, so that is newton per meter. Now, so that the deformation of spring AD is now equal to FAD, 19.62 newtons all over 40, we have newton per meter. And this is therefore equal to zero, zero point four nine zero five meters. Let us proceed to AB. So for AB, your FAB is equal to, so your FAB, you try to look at FAB is 
14.014 newtons and your KAB is equal to 30. So that is newton per meter. So that your spring elongation of AB is equal to FAB and that is equal to 14. 0 0.014 all over newtons all over 30 newton per meter or that is equal to 0 0.4671 meter and we have the other spring AC spring AC your FAC is equal to 15.885 newtons and your KAC is equal to 20 that is newton per meter now so that the spring depth formation or spring elongation of AC is now equal to FAC, which is 15.885 all over newtons, all over KAC, which is 20 newton per meter. Or this is equal to 0 0.7928 meter. We have problem number six. So we have a homogeneous sphere with a weight of 75 pounds. Rest on two smooth planes as shown. So this plane makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal and this plane makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. Determine the forces exerted on the sphere by the planes at contact points A and B. So at contact points A, so that is the contact point at point A, contact points A and B. So we now have the two contact points, so that is now your... A, contact point A, and this is now your contact point B. So first again, let us try to draw the free body diagram of the sphere. We now have the FBD of the sphere. Now have the sphere. <laughs> this is your sphere. This is the center of the sphere. So we have the weight of the sphere, and the weight of the sphere is 75 pounds. So the weight is equal to 75 pounds. Now, we have the contact, the uh, reaction between contact uh, point A. So, you try to take note that the reaction <coughs> between contact, uh, contact point A So, this is the smooth plane. So the reaction should be 90 degrees with the smooth plane. 
And therefore, if that one endures 90 degrees, hence, this one in here is equal to this one is now equal to 60 degrees. Okay. Now, the uh, contact point at B, so this is the contact between the sphere and that of uh, the smooth plane. So it makes an angle of uh, 20 degrees with the horizontal. So we have now the reaction at point B, so that is R, B, and it makes an angle of 20 degrees with the vertical. So it's the center of the sphere. Now, if I'm going to call this one as the x-axis, this is now your x-axis, and this one in here is the y-axis. This one is the y-axis. Now, so you try to take note in here now that if this one in here, so this is, this one, is 60 degrees so I'm just going to get that one so it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal so this one in here is now your 60 degrees now, if you try to draw a normal line to the smooth plane, so this one is now the normal line, so which is the direction of A. So this is your point A. Now, so that if you try to extend this one in here and this one in here, this is equal to 30 degrees. Hence, this one is 90. Now, so if that is 90 degrees, I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this horizontal. So this is a line perpendicular to the horizontal. This one in here is 90 degrees. Hence, this one is 60 degrees. So we have 60 degrees in here. Similarly, for R sub B. Now, applying now the equation of equilibrium. Summation of forces along the x-axis is set equal to zero to the right forces positive. The x component of Ra is going to the right. So we have Ra that is sine of 60 degrees minus Rb we have sine of 20 degrees is equal to zero. So that one is equal to zero. So this is now the first equation. Summation of forces along the y-axis is equal to zero. We have upward forces positive. Ra going up, the component in the y-axis, so we have positive cosine of 
60 degrees plus RB cosine of 20 degrees minus 75 is equal to 0. So that your RA sine of 60 degrees minus a cosine of 60 degrees plus RB cosine of 20 degrees is equal to 75. So this is your equation number two. Now, from equation one, so your RA sine sine of 60 degrees is equal to RB sine of 20 degrees. So that your R sub B is equal to, this is RA sine of 60 degrees over sine of 20 degrees. Let us try to substitute in equation 2. So this is now your equation 2. So we have Ra cosine of 60 degrees plus your Rb is Ra sine of 60 degrees over sine of 20 degrees cosine of 20 degrees is equal to 75. Hence, your Ra, so we have cosine of 60, factor out Ra, plus sine of 60 degrees, cosine of 20 degrees, over sine of 20 degrees is equal to 75. Okay, so that your RA is now equal to 75 pounds all over cosine of 60 degrees plus we have sine of 60 degrees cosine of 20 degrees the over sine of 20 degrees and this one is equal to 26.047 pounds so let us try to substitute RA in equation 1. Substitute RA in equation 1. So from equation 1, your RB is equal to RA sine 60 all over sine of 20 degrees. So your RB is therefore equal to 26.047 pounds. We have sine of 60 degrees over sine of 20 degrees. So your RB is now equal to 65.953 pounds. That is the value. Or 
an alternate way of solving this problem since there are only three fo concurrent forces acting on the sphere. Then we can apply the force triangle. It's a force triangle. You try to take note that the uh, force triangle is applicable only when there is only three forces in a given force system, concurrent force system. Okay, so we have the weight. So this is therefore the weight which is equal to 75, that is your W, equal to 75 pounds. Okay, so your RA is going up, making an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. So this is now your RA. So it is head to tip in connection. So this one in here, is now your RA making an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. So we have your RA. And then we have your RB, so that is up to the left. So this is going up to the left. Goes up to the left, that is your RB, who is now making an angle of 20 degrees with the vertical. So that is 20 degrees. Now, so that this angle in here is now equal to the interior angle of a triangle is 180 minus 60 minus 20 and that one is equal to 100 degrees. Now, for a force system to be in equilibrium, the force polygon must close. Okay, so this triangle in here must close so that the force system is in equilibrium, thereby the resultant is equal to zero. Now, using sign law. Seventy-five is to sign of one hundred degrees is equal to R A is to sign of the opposite angle, that is 20 degrees, is equal to RB, is to sign of the opposite angle, 60 degrees. So that your RA is now equal to 75, sign of 20 degrees over sign of 100 degrees and this is equal to 26.047 pounds and then your RB is equal to 75 sine of 60 degrees over sine of 100 degrees. Hence, your RB is 65.953 pounds. Problem number seven.
the 200 mm diameter pipes shown each have a mass of 200 kilometer a uh, 200 kilograms so we have two pipes in here the mass of each pipe is 200 kilograms determine the force exerted by the supports on the pipes at contact surfaces so we have your at contact surfaces you have now your a so this is the contact surface a contact surface b and the contact surface c assume all surfaces to be smooth so first let us try to determine the weight of each pipe so we now have the weight of each pipe w is equal to m g and this is sequel to so we have weight of each pipe so this is sequel to 200 kilograms multiply this by 9.81 meter per second square and this is equal to 1962 kilogram meter per second square or that is 1962 newtons now we have the uh, free body diagram FBD of the uh, upper pipe so the FBD of the upper pipe so this is the upper pipe so we have the center of the upper pipe so we have the weight which is equal to this is 1962 newtons so this is the weight <coughs> and we have uh, the reaction at point C so that is the uh, contact point of the pipe and the smooth plane so it's making an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal This is okay, going to the center. This is now your RC. It makes an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical. Okay. That is the same as what we have uh, done in the previous problem. And uh, we also have the uh, contact between the two pipes. And let us try to consider that one as uh, the contact between the two pipes. So that is parallel to the smooth plane. So if that's parallel to the smooth plane, then this one is now your R 
1. And this is 45 degrees also with the vertical since this one in here, since the contact point between the two, between the two pipes, the reaction of which is parallel to the smooth plane. So we call that one as R1. Now, I was going to consider this one as <coughs> the x-axis. So this one is now the x-axis. Since this is 45, that is 45. Hence, this one is 90 degrees. So this one is now the y-axis. the y axis so that if you will going to take summation of forces along the x axis is equal to zero so this is the indicated x axis so summation of forces along the x axis is equal to zero okay that is positive. So we have RC. So your RC is directed along the x-axis. So we have the component of the uh, weight in the x-axis. So we have this one in here is 45 uh, degrees. That one is also equal to 45 degrees. So the component of the uh, 1962 newtons or the weight of the pipe in the x-axis is 1962 sine of 45 degrees. So this is going in this direction. So we have negative. So negative 1962 sine of 45 degrees. That is equal to zero. Hence your RC is equal to 13.87.344 newtons. So that is the reaction between the smooth plane and that of the pipe. Now, let's try to get summation of forces. Okay, so your R1 in here has no x component because it is directed along the y axis. Summation of forces along the y axis is equal to zero. So that is now the indicated y axis. So in that direction is positive. So we have positive R1 directed along the y axis. And then we have minus 1962 cosine of 45 degrees. Again, RC has no component in the y-axis because this is again directed along the x-axis. And that one is equal to zero. So that your R1 is equal to 13 87.344 newtons. 344 newtons. So this R1 is now the reaction between 
the contact surfaces of the two pipes. Now, again, since there are, since there are three concurrent forces acting on the pipe, then we can again apply your force triangle. So, or applying your force triangle, we now have your weight. So, this is the weight, and your weight is now equal to weight is 1962 newtons. So this one is your RC. So we have your RC, 45 degrees with the vertical. And we have another reaction R1. And your R1 again is 45 degrees with the vertical. So that is 45 degrees. Hence, this one is 90 degrees. So that if you will now going to get cosine of 45 degrees, that is sequel, I'm going to use this 45 degrees in here. So that is sequel to the adjacent side, RC all over the hypotenuse, 1962. Hence, your RC is equal to 1962 cosine of 45 degrees, and that one is equal to 1387.344 newtons. And uh, Cosine of 45 degrees. I'm going to use this 45 degrees in here. So that is the adjacent is R1 all over the hypotenuse 1962 newtons or R1 is equal to 1962 cosine of 45 degrees. This is therefore equal to 13 87.344 newtons. Ne, 